Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, Riker, trade season is upon us, and that, that means one thing, we got some news, Riker. That's right. We got some news, some Raptors news. The Boston Celtics are reportedly looking to, or could potentially move on from Tristan Thompson, according to Chris Haynes. I'll throw the report on the screen. And the Raptors have shown interest, Riker. So this is a big man. He gets rebounds. He's athletic. We've talked about him in the past. People weren't interested then, but are we interested now, Riker? <laughs> <laughs> we don't typically give post-game reaction segment animations during a non-post-game reaction. I don't even know if you have it, but I'm tossing up. I'm wearing the OG sweater. And so I'm just going to start this off to say, what is this stupid report, Ben? The Raptors struggle. I can't even remember the last time that they beat the Boston Celtics. And now you're going to make them a trade partner. So you're going to take the one player on the team that the Boston Celtics is not saying is compatible to them winning and then make them giving them some assets that they'd be willing to receive in order for this guy. You're trying to win in the East. You're not trying to give it up for every other team to challenge the Nets or challenge the 76ers, whoever you think that the powerhouse is. This one, to me, it's stupid. It makes no sense. But if you look at Tristan Thompson, the player, look at Aaron Baines, the backup center, you can't make an argument that Aaron Baines is better. Maybe you can, but if, if you're just saying receiving Tristan Thompson on this team, of course you want to receive him. Yeah, and I like that you brought up the context of Boston, why it would just suck to trade with them, but you, I guess where the Raptors are at presently, being ha having, obviously, we bounced back. We were ahead of the Celtics a couple weeks ago, then obviously we had four games where we just didn't have our starting lineup, and that dug us right back into a hole where the East is so competitive right now, every loss means something. So maybe Masai Ujiri looks at it as, okay, I know the Boston Celtics are rivals. We lost them in the playoffs last year. But if we can just find a way to get a, a, a big man that rebounds and might be a little bit of an improvement over Aaron Baines, even though you could probably make a debate there, and I'm sure we'll do that over the course of this podcast, you just got to do it because the Toronto Raptors need pieces. They need everything they can to dig themselves out of this hole or else the fade for Caters would have been right. You know, we called them foolish. We called them crazy, but... Maybe maybe they saw it. 40 chess for them looking forward. But Tristan Thompson, he's a guy, 8 points per game, 8 rebounds. He's a player on the Celtics. He hasn't really had the impact they were sort of expecting. They wanted a big man to really come in and push Tice to being the backup. And obviously Robert Williams, who killed us in the playoffs last season, he, he's never really been consistent for that team. So they, they just sort of were going to push him as the third stringer. The thing about the Celtics, Robert Williams has looked really good as of late. Tice has obviously been Tice. And Tristan Thompson, without his three-point shooting ability, doesn't have the size of a Robert Williams in terms of just getting up there in athleticism and shot block, even though he's a better rebounder. He has become expendable for this team. So he's a guy, the Raptors have seemingly been connected to him for a while, Riker. So would you like to see his rebounding brought in? Ben, ben you mentioned Tiny Tice who shoots the three. Robert Williams who just rebounds and does explosive athletic things. But even Grant Williams hit seven threes in the Raptors, along with Peyton Pritchard, when the Raptors faced the Celtics the first time around, the first iteration. And then they got beat even worse the second time, if I remember correctly. And who used to be, it seems like when they wear the green treads, they like to just defeat the Raptors, humiliating. Aaron Baines was a two-time Boston Celtic prior to last season when he was on the Phoenix Suns, he only hit 21 threes. And I swear that 21 of them, 20 or 21 of, of his 21 threes were probably against the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> Cause I remember him being money from distance. So you bring back in a guy in Tristan Thompson, who is a champion, a champion with LeBron James. He's a veteran in the almost comparable exact minutes. He's getting three, four more rebounds per game. Again, I don't think you can get any worse from scoring on the interior than Aaron Baines. So you're not trading down necessarily. It might be a very lateral move. And he's only a $9 million guy, two years. So you're not bringing in a rental. You probably don't have to trade a lot to get rid of him. You could do a Patrick McCaw, Stanley Johnson trade. That would work. You could trade Aaron Baines one for one, basically. And that would work. Or Ben, what we'll get into a little bit further down the road is there's big names that are still out there. 
Andre Drummond, right? There's big players that, you know, Boston Celtics, they are interested in, the Lakers are interested in, the Nets are interested in. Is this maybe them saying, let's swing a three-team deal, let's bring in a couple of players to start making some big shuffles? Is this what ultimately gets Kyle Lowry out the door? Not to the Boston Celtics. Hope that would just destroy everyone. But is there maybe just a huge move that could be made? Well, I'll address the huge move first. And before we do that, we've been forgetting to plug it, but we're on the road to 20k subscribers. So if you're looking for some big trades to happen, definitely subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to, to us. Uh, stay tuned to Raptors Digest. We're also saying Riker and I are going to play one-on-one -on -one once we get to 20k, but Riker's only in Newfoundland for so long. So we're plugging it here. Subscribe, tell your friends. But most importantly, get a big trade to happen or something, something to make the Raptors improve. And you brought up a big trade, Riker, or the potential maybe this could be a, a piece, an addition, because obviously this report has come out and it's coming from Chris Haynes, who's a credible reporter, not, not like some of the sketchier reports we've had earlier in trade season. But the Raptors have been linked to just moving Kyle Lowry and stuff for such a long time. And name a name that's been thrown around not tied to the Raptors but Kemba Walker for the Boston Celtics apparently mm -hmm. Danny Ainge has been trying to fleece teams trying to trade an injured Kemba Walker but it seems like he has bounced back maybe Ainge still has him on the block if Kyle Lowry does get moved I wouldn't mind getting Kemba Walker back if you're including Tristan Thompson but if we're being realistic I don't think the Celtics are going to want they look at us as just as much of a rival as we look at them. Maybe, you know, there's the, the smugness that comes with a lot of Celtics fans, but they recognize the Raptors <laughs> are, are a credible threat in the Eastern Conference, so I'm sure they don't want to make us better by any means. So if we're making a trade with the Celtics, I think it's just going to be a minor move, a minor tweak. I don't know if you agree and we should just move on to the, the smaller names, or do you have well, any other things I in put, mind? I thought that same thing. I put together a Kemba Walker, Tristan Thompson for mm -hmm. Kyle Lowry, Pat McCaw, Stanley Johnson, and Matt Thomas, a bunch of guards, because I assume that they're fine. Like you said, Tice, the two Williams, they, they sort of, and, and the rest of their guards are so big and Tatum and Brown, like they can play a true effective small ball lineup. But I 100% agree with your assessment to do a one for one trade. I think both teams would say, wow, we're actually pretty close in the standings. We'll probably play each other in the playoff time. We don't want to give any leg up any sort of advantage to them by trading away somebody who might not have worked for our team but is going to go and thrive in their system yeah and i was i was thinking about this today too and you brought up the names of stanley johnson and mccaw mccaw is a guy that nick nurse loves so much that i don't know if he'll get moved but a matt thomas type of player giving him to the boston celtics would absolutely horrify me compared to a Stanley Johnson or, or McCullough, who don't have the same offensive potential as a Matt Thomas. And yes, I understand how Matt Thomas has performed this season. His three-point shooting is down. But we all know his potential. From We've seen it last season with how hot he can get. And I can just picture Matt Thomas playing the Celtics four times a year. Brad Stevens throwing him out 30 minutes a game against the Toronto Raptors and Matt Thomas averaging 45 points against us every night, the same way Peyton Pritchard does, the same way these other small three-point shooting guards do when they play the Toronto Raptors. I I would be absolutely horrified of giving up Matt Thomas specifically to a team like the Boston Celtics. So if we do make this deal, I, I want TD, I want Matt Thomas, these guys that have the potential to be high-value scorers not going anywhere near that team. So Stanley Johnson, who struggled a little bit, I'd be comfortable moving. McCaw, we don't really know. He's pretty injury prone, but has shown some potential. I'd be fine with, but Matt Thomas, TD for me, not going to the Celtics. <laughs> and listen, the, the Celtics play such good perimeter basketball, rotation basketball. They've honed in their small ball lineup that you're giving Grant Williams wide open corner mm -hmm. threes. The Raptors just can't keep up. Now, I 100% agree with you again that swap out Grant Williams and put Matt Thomas there, <laughs> and it will just be a <laughs> heart-wrenching night. Terrible. But then, you know, we can talk about trade proposals. I'm sure people that watch this, they're not, they don't love when we give trade ideas that aren't from an actual fact, an actual source. So we'll leave it to people's creativity, imagination, speculation as to what could possibly happen. I tend to agree that 
it's going to be a small player for small yeah. player, small potato for small potato, probably even maybe a three team trade, just something to shake up so that it's not a direct between two competitors. But Ben, I'm about to hit a second OGs in my statement. I'm just flashing that we have an OG sweater. I'll, I'll break the segment out too. <laughs> <laughs> we have it sweet. So I'm going to, I'm just going to flash that I have that on a crew neck right now. And Ben, it's the soft side of why we don't want Tristan Thompson on this team. <laughs> You know, <laughs> the soft side of why we avoid the likes of Blake Griffin, the likes of Jordan Clarkson, who would actually be fantastic on this team, the likes of Devin Booker. You might say, why would you want to avoid Devin Booker? The likes of Ben Simmons. We didn't want a one for one Ben Simmons and Kyle Lowry, even though there was speculation for this around reason. that. <laughs> it's for this reason, Ben. The Kardashian curse. We don't need Chloe coming up. We don't need a now single Kim Kardashian trailing Drake back up into the six. You know, there's it, it turned from memes into legitimate career destroying or career slowing down for these players. Let's just avoid this altogether. We were willing to take LeVar Ball. I think we can, you know, with that LaMel Ball trade that we passed, we can't let ourselves slip into the Kardashians. But. Ranker, you brought it up. Kim is a free agent right now. We have the biggest star in that pop world or whatever in Drake, ready to go, waiting for the Raptors to be back in the six. If we get Tristan Thompson, Chloe's coming, Kim could be coming. That could be why the I think there was rumors that Drake and uh, Drake was a part of the Kanye Kim divorce. I don't know. This could be a. <laughs> have you seen Drake balling on Instagram? I seen a clip that somebody called he was posting somebody up and they said bring in a second man bring in the double if if tristan thompson comes up with the whole kardashian clan we might as well sign drake to a contract because <laughs> that's it it's the end of our days yeah that that would be a it'd be fun you know it'd be fun maybe we get all the guys all the the kardashian get a kardashian on the podcast i don't know but uh before we go too off the rails Riker, i'm throwing it at you aaron baines or tristan thompson Rebounding Thompson, Baines got the shooting, defense, I don't really know. Who would you rather have as our insurance big man? I'd, I would prefer to have Tristan Thompson as the insurance big man. No cap, all jokes aside, the, the reason is Tristan Thompson has been a career offensive rebounder. The Raptors are a terrible offensive rebounding team. They love to just get back in transition. They love to, you know, shoot quick transition threes as well. So the ball's always there, but nobody's in the mix. Tristan Thompson, you know, like I said, it doesn't get any worse from a perimeter scoring perspective than Aaron Baines. But now you have a guy who can actually get up there and grab the ball. Baines doesn't jump. Tristan Thompson at least jumps. Right. So you might get a couple of garbage buckets that you were leaving on the table. And in those close games, those points could make the difference. So Tristan Thompson for my money. See, I'd look at that and I say, because Tr Tristan Thompson is certainly a better offensive rebounder, but I think that's by choice why the Toronto Raptors don't go after offensive rebounds. As you said, they get back on defense. And even when we had Marcus Gasol, Serge Ibaka, Jonas Valanciunas, big guys that could be capable of getting offensive rebounds. They just didn't because Nick Nurse wanted the bigs to get back in transition, protect the rim and stuff. So maybe we'd be just wasting so uh, maybe the game plan could adjust now with a guy that's one of the best offensive rebounders in the league, certainly. But we could potentially waste that skill in Tristan Thompson if he's on the team. And yes, Aaron Baines has struggled with his inside scoring, but he is at least somewhat of a threat from beyond the three-point line. But I think Tristan Thompson's ability to just be more consistent on those post hooks on the interior does make him more of an effective offensive threat. They're both not great in the pick and roll. They're both not great rim protectors. So... I, I'm not sold that, you know, he'd be the, the surefire better player than Baines. Maybe you just don't switch it up. And when you consider the fact we'd have to give up assets, right, to, to trade for Tristan Thompson, I'd rather give them up for a different style of player. But I think we're both in agreement. We'd rather have Boucher on the court than a Tristan Thompson and a Darren Baines. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and And assets is really kind of a that's an overvalue of what we have assembled now in our bench and our deep bench. But I I'd flip a Stanley Johnson and a Matt Thomas to 76ers for a Mike Scott or something. If we're talking, we just want a three point shooting big man. That's year, 
He's, I know he's been yeah. tough, but this is my example. It's that we're so desperate right now that if we're not tanking, if we're middle treading, if we're becoming a treadmill team, shake it up, get better perimeter scoring, that guys that can at least get in there and rebound because Matt Thomas is pretty useless. You know, Stanley Johnson, he's in and out. I, I think there's something that you can do, even if it's very minimal impact, it could still improve marginally the team. Yeah. And I see what you're saying. And I, I agree. Like, I don't agree with Mike Scott specifically, but obviously that's just a name he threw off the cuff because Mike Scott, whenever we think of three point shooting big men, specifically against the Raptors, Mike Scott's the first guy that comes to mind. But he's upper echelon yeah. against the Raptors, <laughs> against the rest of the league. He's Scott or scum. He's terrible. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But, uh, you know, maybe we'd have a case. I, I just do not want to trade Matt Thomas. I want to keep him on our deep bench for the rest of his career because I guarantee you, I guarantee it, the second he goes to another team, he's turning into Ray Allen, Kyle Korver, this type of player, whenever he plays against the Toronto Raptors. I picture it. Now, remember, <laughs> Kyle Korver went to, bu- to the Milwaukee Bucks. You can't be put in a better situation with all the pressure that Giannis draws and still couldn't find himself he's, he a, was 40, a solid though. position. He was four, maybe 50. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> maybe 50. <laughs> it's a uh, it's tough, but uh let us know what you guys think on uh Tristan Thompson, the potential of him coming in. And yeah, as we mentioned earlier in the pod, we're on the road to 20k subscribers, so subscribe, like the video, pop into the like section, check out the Instagram, the Twitter, the TikTok, the raptorsdigest.ca. Rikers point into a I believe the hoodie in the background. You want to say hoodie up? now, baby. <laughs> That's it. I'm sounding off. I'm just excited that something might happen, Ben. Something. And again, people don't like it when we say what that something should be or might be. So we'll just leave it at something could be. (laughs) Hope that that satisfies people. Cheers.